So we are looking at the best SOLIDWORKS feature enhancements of the decade. And like I mentioned, um, this one I, I certainly enjoy putting this together. I think we'll have some fun going through it together. But first, let me introduce myself. See, so, yeah, I'm, I'm Greg Buter. I'm located out in our office, um, Boulder, Colorado. So I've been using SOLIDWORKS for around 20 years. I've actually been in the reseller channel for around 15. So plenty of time to watch the software evolve over all those years. So I really enjoy helping our customers solve problems and also conducting SOLIDWORKS training classes. And I'm excited as we, we already see those um, ramping up significantly this year. On the personal side, I have a wonderful wife, pair of young kids, and they all keep me busy outside of work. Um, for fun, I enjoy hiking uh, with the dogs and of course the rest of the family. Riding bikes is also one of my favorite hobbies. And it's kind of like hiking, but you can go faster and cover more ground. Um, not as easy in the dog part though. So a lot of presentations are precisely focused, maybe a deep look at specific topics. And I mentioned fun already a few times. So I feel like it, this one is more fun because we're looking at really looking at cool functionality that was added over the years. So we have about 30 minutes covering about 25 of our favorite enhancements from 2010 to 2020. So I have a few goals for you. Hopefully you can learn something new. Hopefully you see, see something that you've forgotten about or maybe just a subtle technique or maybe a new to you feature. Uh, two, find something to share with a coworker or peer. Maybe you see something that reminds you to pass that info over to a buddy that could really take advantage of that feature. Three, reflect on the past. Maybe it was a past rollout event or SOLIDWORKS world. Maybe it reminds you of an old project you worked on. So hopefully uh, some positive thoughts there. So starting, let's go all the way back to 2010. Uh, SOLIDWORKS World was in Anaheim, California that year. So kicking off our top SOLIDWORKS feature enhancements of the decade is mouse gestures, multiple bodies and sheet metal parts, and exporting to DXF and DWG files. So we're starting off with the debut of mouse gestures here. They just have to be turned on, but you can use anywhere from um, two to 12 gestures. And you just hold your right mouse button to access these. So it's really a quick access a tool setup. It's a modal command, so you have different setups for parts, assemblies, drawing, and of course sketching mode. So jumping back to my file here, just a right click and a drag, I can start adding a fillet, accessing the fillet command. Create a new sketch here. And just something simple for demonstration here. A rectangle. And I'll do what you always do, add dimensions. And even though I'm in sketch mode, I can still add feature commands to that. So even though I'm in the, the sketch mode, I can still add features like my extrude to that command. So it makes it very easy to access and set up and customize that for your often used commands. So here we have a machined part it can be better manufactured out of sheet metal maybe. So SOLIDWORKS 2010 gave us the ability to do multiple solid bodies within a sheet metal part. So previously this would have to be done with assemblies. So recreating this component out of sheet metal, it certainly is gonna require these multi pieces. So you can see I already have the sides done. So creating this top plate, it's gonna be easily done in this single part file. So the base flanges, right, to capture the design intent with those holes, I already have my sketch there. Another one right down here. And so now we're up to five individual sheet metal bodies in our single part. So not only did SOLIDWORKS 2010 give us the ability to have these multi-bodies, we have the edge flange. Okay, this command was enhanced and it gives us an easy way to bridge these bodies together by selecting the option up to edge and merge. Or I can just choose the two edges and it does that automatically. I might easily adjust that bend location. And the multi-body multi, um, yeah, multi part here, just to verify that everything was all merged together, you can see I can easily select one piece and hit flatten. Indeed, it is all joined. So utilizing this up to edge and merge again on these main side plates, I can connect them. After adjusting the bend location, and once again, look at the flat pattern. And that's gonna let me show you guys that easy way to do the export to DXF. 
It's just going to be a right click. That normal too. Okay, so I just right click, export to DXF. It's really, it doesn't get any easier than that. Right on this menu, I specify what I want to be exported. And then on this little pop up window, it lets me specify items to remove. Maybe I have a countersink hole and I want to get rid of that outer circle. Or maybe it's something that's engraved on the part. So it would let me do that before it actually exports the DXF. Flipping the calendar year forward to 2011, Solbrook's World was in San Antonio, Texas. Solbrook's 2011, some of the gems here include a D feature tool for assemblies and the display manager. So suppliers always eager to have customers use their designs and products, uh, but you might want to protect that intellectual property, right? So you don't want to give all the details. So in this D feature, I can pick and choose how to simplify the model. I can remove parts based on their size, or maybe just get out the internal parts or specifically select components to remove. But what I'm doing here is it's unique to SOLIDWORKS is the ability to preserve the assembly motion. And I can come in here and select several parts to group them together. In this case, maybe these two different casings, maybe there's a shaft inside them that I don't group with them. It would let me preserve the mates between the items in those groups, which lets me then get that, get that motion. So SOLIDWORKS then goes through and, and based on our selections, in this case, removes all the internal parts. It only takes a few seconds. You can see the preview there. So it does a very efficient job of cleaning out a lot of the detail that might not be necessary and still preserves a lot of the external detail, right? Because that gives us the information about what it looks like and we can make sure it fits in our design. SOLIDWORKS 2011 also gave us this display manager right at the top of our feature manager. It's kind of a one-stop shop for all things visual here. So I can edit scenes, I can edit lights, all these appearance properties. Um, we look specifically at maybe the colors of the parts. I can switch how it's shown here. If I go to hierarchy, like that lets me notice that the, at the assembly level, there's some appearance settings that are overriding the part settings. So easily remedied, I could right click it, remove appearance. Um, that's a scenario where Previously, right prior to this display manager, finding that scenario and rectifying it might, you know, take quite a bit more digging into it. Now, jumping to 2012, right, uh, SOLIDWORKS World was in San Diego that year. Best feature enhancements 2012 included a command search, magnetic lines, and auto balloon functionality. So this command search, I have to turn it on if it's, if it's not already, but it's a powerful tool and it makes it very quick and easy to find any commands that might be buried in your pull down menus or in your command manager. So let's do a um, quick search for a split command. Identifying it as a command. And again, I'm just going to search for split. And once it shows me that, I could customize a toolbar. I can just drag that from that list onto whatever toolbar I want. And just like that, it's customized. Uh, if I hit the eyeball button here. SOLIDWORKS is doing this. It moved my pointer. It put the big red arrow there. It found that tool for us. Or if I see it in the list, I can actually just click it to launch that command. So one of our favorites on this list, because it's great for a new user um, or a user that maybe has been running SOLIDWORKS for 20 years, or if you jump on somebody else's machine and you can't handle their, their layout, it can be a quick way to still find what you're looking for. So now let's look at the power of magnetic lines in our drawings. So here we have an assembly drawing. And I'm going to get it ready for a bill of materials. All right, I'm going to first going to place our exploded ISO view. Put our bill of materials. And then the next step traditionally would be to add our balloons. So if I use the auto balloon method, it's it's going to give us some nicely arranged balloons here, but notice how they're, these ones are linearly aligned. Um, and that's because they're attached to a magnetic line. So this line is easy to manipulate and gives us excellent control of balloon placement, keeps things clean. Pull all those up. Individual balloons can be shuffled and moved along that line. 
and you can even um, you can evenly space them if you want. The equal spaced option. So now that the balloons are placed, the same auto balloon command has another awesome feature here. We can resequence these balloons, ordering them sequentially, and even pick the first one. You see, it's item 13 at the top there. I do order sequentially. It happened. Switch that to two. Um, but I was able to pick that one as my item one. So you can see that list. And of course, the table updates accordingly, right? It ships those rows around. So already up to 2013, SOLIDWORKS World. Uh, I remember that one was in Orlando, Florida. The best new features from 2013, great pair here. The quick filter button, it's beautifully simple. And then the intersect feature, I think it's great. It's um, the other end of the spectrum. It's, it's amazingly powerful. So the quick filter buttons, when you're opening a file and on that open dialog, and actually new in the 2019 welcome screen, you'll see the same commands. But not only does it help you filter which file types of your SOLIDWORKS parts, assemblies, and drawings, it also has a button there for the top level assembly files that exist in that directory. You know, the intersect feature here, right, it bridges the gap between solid and surface modeling. So this wireless router design, it's a little um, old school here. It needs some work to make it more stylish. So the housing is modeled with solid features and I've already created this new top profile using surfaces. If we do a section view, you'll see that what we're, we're trying to achieve here. So it definitely requires adding some material and removing some material in different locations. So with this intersect feature, it allows us to choose both solid and surface bodies. And what SOLIDWORKS is gonna do is it's gonna find all the possible regions where they intersect. And based on all those possible regions, we can identify which, which areas we wanna keep or remove. So this awesome feature, it's gonna cut out any of the tedious commands previously required, like cut with surface, um, replace face, knitting, trimming, merging, et cetera, lots of stuff. So far less work is required now that we have this intersect command. So another obvious addition to our, our list of best SOLIDWORKS feature enhancements of the decade. Now 2014, SOLIDWORKS World returned to San Diego, California. Best enhancement 2014, right, um, a very simple way to create mates. And another method for creating and working with sketched splines and even replacing sketch entities is something cool you'll see. In 2014, the creation of mates became much more simple and faster with this context toolbar. So enabling that in your options, we can add mates just by holding down control and selecting these multiple faces. And right there is our context sensitive toolbar there. So I can hit coincident, control, control, so I control select and then select and then the mate pops up there for doing concentric. And it's been enhanced to even some more advanced mates, right? In this case, profile center. We also have slot mates, width mates. So you're already seeing a theme here of uh, a, lot of, a lot of additions, enhancements, help reduce the amount of mouse travel required to do your everyday uh, frequent commands. Now let's take a look at style splines. So ever since SOLIDWORKS release, splines have always been, you know, I'd call them a necessary evil, right? Working with these is certainly challenging and absolutely uh, very intimidating for new users. So if I look at these curvature combs, what you might notice is, well, certainly asymmetric and you might see some inflection points that you didn't initially notice. So in SOLIDWORKS 2014, the style spline command so rather than defining the spline by spline points, um, we're sketching a series of lines. It's kind of like control polygon. You've used that to edit the old method of splines. And what's great here is I can add relations to these. So it allows me to you know, work towards fully defining this spline, which is something fully defining splines is something you might not have actually done um, using the, the older method. It was certainly a lot more tedious and challenging. I continue adding relations. I can add dimensions to these as well. That might help us ensure symmetry if that's what we're after. 
and you can see our spline is now fully defined. And if we want to look at those uh, curvature combs to get a good idea of how smooth it is and also view symmetry, see that's much, much better. So another top enhancement is this replace sketch entity. So a lot of downstream features might depend on the original spline, but if I replace the entity there, the old one to the new one, now those downstream parts, those references will now point to our new spline it gives the ability to do some pretty drastic edits with, with much less cleanup than, than would be previously required. Jumping up to 2015, SolidWorks World, if you guys, I'd, I'd let you guess, but um, it was in Phoenix that year. The best feature enhancements of this release, we decided it would include, uh, there's a lot of great strides in the functionality of patterns. There was something called a new variable, um, a variable pattern feature. And it allows you to create geometries that would, you know, take far many more features um, to than, than without the pattern command. But actually, my favorite was a little addition, a little enhancement to your commonly used linear pattern. And then we'll also see flattening of sheet metal parts always been very helpful. But SOLIDWORKS 2015, a great enhancement extended flattening to our surface bodies and faces. So here we have the linear pattern, right? And I mentioned it was updated with the ability to go up to reference geometry. So this new option, it removes the need maybe to use equations to control instance count or equations for the spacing. So it can use it to maybe set a margin away from the end of the part or some reference geometry. And it's great for ensuring that features would not be created too close to the edge of a part like this. I don't want to hold one millimeter from the edge. Um, well, maybe I do, but as the part is modified, you know, these parameters are being evaluated. Maybe I say I want one half inch from each end, and I want 25 of them, and I want SOLIDWORKS to adjust the spacing to give me those results. And that can all be accomplished with these options here. So it makes infusing your design intent into your model much easier and certainly efficient. So the flattened surface, great tool that added in 2015 here, opens the door for many things such as fabric patterns or vinyl decals. So this surface, um, this control knob here, you wanna put a decal here. So this flattened surface command, it's up for the challenge. So I select that top face and sort of an edge to lock it to. And these edges for the cutout there for the arrows, right? Maybe I want those, I wanna cut out around that geometry in my decal. So to get this to work, it has to stretch and compress certain um, portions of that decal. So I can see this deformation plot to get a better idea of what's going on there. This is creating a new surface body. So I could hide that body, but what I just want to show is that if I do a model edit that maybe makes um, that shape uh, bulge out a little bit more, you can see it will update the deformation plot here, maybe to values that are that are too extreme. So what we can see is that we can add relief cuts. Accepting that and watching the deformation plot modify there. So very, very powerful tool. Something that you can see uh, how it how it made it to our list. And then we could, of course, export that to DXF like um, we did earlier today. So now SOLIDWORKS 2016, keeping our SOLIDWORKS world reference theme here, that was in Dallas, Texas. Uh, so our top feature enhancements include interface shortcuts, easy ways to repair some busted mates, and an awesome way to adjust mate parameters to control some of the assembly positions. So first we made it easy to dig into assembly parts reference geometry with these breadcrumbs. So when you simply select your parts, you see the breadcrumbs pop up. And if you hit D on the keyboard, it actually brings them right to your cursor. But you can dig through the uh, assemblies, subassembly parts, features. You can even edit mates. So following what we just looked at earlier, it's another way to access and edit perform many commands without having to move your mouse all over the place. So all these things are modifiable right from these breadcrumbs. 
Uh, this cool assembly here has three instances of these adjustment knobs and all mates are happily solved. But if I switch their configurations, it's going to create, it's going to show um, mates are related to new faces, which has given us errors. So SOLIDWORKS 2016 gave us an enhancement to make this a quick fix. Really what it is, is all I have to do is fix one of them, right? I fix this one. It says, hey, do you want to replace all other faces, all the references that were going to that face? And so just like that, I was able to repair those. So the amount of effort that can save on a much larger assembly, it's easy, easy to understand how that one made our list as well. So with all the degrees of freedom and motion a model like this robot has, it can be a, handle, a handful to manipulate you know, to the desired position. So maybe just like controlling an actual robot, we have mate controller. So very convenient enhancement. One of the top, I'd say that was added in 2016. But all our numerically driven mates can be added to this mate controller interface. So in this case, I've already given the mates descriptive names. Um, you can see I can modify positions with those values at the left. Or I can unlock them and just drag and position the model and those values will, will update based on the current position. So we're basically defining you know, positions, nine of them or so, and then I'm able to define how many seconds it takes to get from position one to position two to position three. And then probably what you're thinking is, yes, we can definitely create an animation through these. And when you take this information, so it's almost like configurations, you could actually export these to your configuration as well. You can see my table there, I've specified pretty much one second from each position. But if I wanted to actually create an MP4 AVI file, I could use a SOLIDWORKS animation to actually push that out. You can even have it render through all that process. So that might be a time, um, might take a good bit of time to do that, but you can see how doing something like this, it's very easy to actually define all those positions with this mate controller. So now we're in 2017. SOLIDWORKS World was in LA that year. Top and fe feature enhancements here, we have shaded sketch contours. The wrap feature became much more powerful and sketch offsets can be done in 3D geometry. So first let's look at these contours. So here I go creating a new sketch. Maybe I wanna extrude or do a cut here. And if you click your feature and you don't see a preview, you know, that can be a little disheartening, um, but it's a, usually an indicator of a problem. So if we turn on the sketch contour option that's new here, shaded sketch contours, that lets me know it's not dark, so it is not a closed contour. So whoops, let's just drag that back. Now it's closed, but you can see it's real easy to drag these around or even hold down control and just drag it out in space to create a copy. If I want to pre-select contours to use for commands, um, Alt lets me do that, the Alt key, or I can hold down Alt and control and choose multiple ones to pre-select various contours, just like contour select. So here's the wrap and 3D sketch offsets. You might recognize this, but it's a mobility assisting device. So I'm opening this cuff here. Previously, the wrap command, it worked on analytical geometry like cylinders and planar faces. Well, now it works on almost everything, including spline-based surface. So here we have a sketch containing the product model that I want to emboss on this part. You can see I can actually choose multiple faces. And it's doing this on that, like I said, non-analytical geometry. And look how easy it is to edit. I can move that sketch around and even resize it. You can see how much more powerful this wrap feature became. It's another obvious choice for our list here. And from that same assembly, let's look at this finger cuff area here. So maybe we want to reduce the amount of material and weight here. So if I roll back to where um, we were editing the surface, I can use this new offset on surface command, like offset entities in the sketch realm, but it's a 3D sketch. 
if I go back to one, I can actually switch which face it's being offset on. Let's cancel that. And let's re redo that command. But this time, I'll choose an entire complex face. And then I'll use this as a new boundary for uh, doing a surface trim operation. And when I roll it back down, it's just thickened. Let me just add some quick fillets, sharp edges. So 2017 really did give us some great SOLIDWORKS feature enhancements. Um, SOLIDWORKS World 2018 was in LA again. So we have some great options to choose from. We really liked the new selection tool options and also the smart explode lines was a great feature here. So let's look at these selection options first. So when we try to select things in our model, if we start on that face, you'll see how it tries to grab the face that you're hovering over. So you typically start it out in space like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Using the T key on the keyboard, it stops that from happening. So it does not select the face you're hovering over. And I'm also using the lasso select option here, as opposed to the box select. But grabbing all those faces, doing a delete face command, it's gonna take out that opening along with the bolt recess. Those selections might have taken a good bit of time, but as you can see, the combination of that lasso select and that T key, I can, can make those selections pretty quick. Creating exploded view, that's one of the best ways to communicate our designs. And SOLIDWORKS 2018 gave us the smart explode line tool. And it automatically creates our explode lines. It gathers all the components in our exploded view and previews each explode line. But we have options for where these explode lines attach to the parts. It can be the bounding box or the origin, or I can even drag to any other point on the parts. And SOLIDWORKS also lets us apply this line location to every other identical instance of that part. So that saves us a good bit of time too. And then as you'd expect, changing the explode view, it's gonna update these explode lines, keeping everything current. So if you've spent some time working with the old explode line, method, and you definitely can understand why this one made our list today. 2019 already, SOLIDWORKS World's in Dallas that year. Some of our best feature enhancements from 2019, um, a subtle new option here for trimming sketches and some interference detection enhancements. So here you can see we have some nested contours that overlap, and I'm going ahead and trimming them using our power trim tool. And it does what you've seen, right? It gets rid of the, and deletes those instances after they intersect. But if I do that again, and this time this new checkbox was added in 2019, keep trimmed entities as construction geometry. Well, the end result, uh, as far as the closed profile is the same, but you'll notice instead of deleting those segments, they're actually just converted to center lines. And that can help our downstream features our, our relations stay stay happy, basically. So pretty great enhancement that can easily go unnoticed. So designs like this weldment, they're often modeled in a multi-body part method instead of an assembly. But if we wanna make sure it's every com component has been trimmed and it's not um, interfering, you used to actually have to do this in an assembly. You dump it into an assembly just to run an interference detection. But you can see here, I can do this in the part model now and it definitely helps me identify scenarios where maybe I've missed running a trim command out of certain bodies. So that can save us a lot of time. Another easy choice for our list here. Uh, we are including SOLIDWORKS 2020. So that, you might recall, SOLIDWORKS World became 3D Experience World, and that was in Nashville. So some great enhancements here, envelopes and a drawing detail mode. So the envelope publisher tool, be very helpful when you have multiple systems and several designers. So we're no longer limited to components within the same assembly. So I can select components in a different assembly and then also a destination assembly that I want the reference to basically exist in. And now I can open that reference assembly here or the destination assembly and maybe complete some of my tasks without having to have the complete assembly open. Maybe I can do um, mates check for collision or, or any other design issues we might have. 
It makes it easy to verify that things are going to fit in that top level assembly. So again, makes it simple to work collaboratively in our large assemblies and another great choice for our list of best SOLIDWORKS feature enhancements of the decade. So over the years, SOLIDWORKS has added some great tools for making things faster with assemblies, right? You have large assembly mode and reworking the code to increase performance, even put more leverage on your hardware. But SOLIDWORKS 2020 gave us a huge performance increase for drawings called detailing mode. So this mode lets us open huge complex drawings really in just seconds. So the drawing is open, the views are intact, but the model does not actually get loaded. So it's perfect for quickly opening drawings for printing, design reviews, and minor edits. So it's not just for viewing, right? Plenty of functionality still exists. I can add and edit notes, move views around, edit balloons and item numbers. And we can even, we can even add um, dimensions while we're in drawing detailing mode. There's dimensions for these whole locations. So we love enhancements that save us time, and we all do, and this certainly qualifies, especially some of that time where you're, you're waiting for documents to, to load. So thanks for joining me today. I uh, really enjoyed showing you our version of best SOLIDWORKS feature enhancements. So with so many wonderful enhancements on our list, it really is impossible to pick just one as the best. Um, today, I'm a big fan of the simple enhancements like the file type filter for opening files, uh, command search for finding buttons you're looking for, and the window that pops up to make selecting your mates so fast and easy. Tomorrow, especially if I'm working on drawings, I might say magnetic lines, detailing mode, and probably those smart explode lines. Uh, they're all they're all awesome enhancements. There are actually tons of other ones. You can only imagine um, how many great enhancements didn't make my list today. And then if we jump back, remember those goals we mentioned we started with? So I really hope you guys, you learned something from this presentation for yourself and something to share with others. And as we went over some of these enhancements, I bet we stirred up maybe some positive memories from the past there. So again, thank you. And we have plenty of